Namaste, welcome everyone. My name is Cassandra and I'm gonna take you through this power yoga practice. So definitely a strong flow and we are getting creative with our blocks today. So you do need to have two blocks. You can just set them at the top of the mat. And this is really a practice meant to help you develop and cultivate full body awareness. We are going to look at poses and transitions that you might have done many times previously and see if we can put a little twist on them and see if there's a different way that we can approach the pose and approach the transition. So just a way to get a little bit more creative with our practice and to try something new and step outside of our comfort zone a little bit. Props are a great way to do this and they can really add an extra layer and an extra dimension to your time on the mat overall. So I would say definitely this is more of an intermediate level practice. Take breaks if you need to. And we're just going to do a regular warm up to start off with. So you don't need your props right away. Let's begin in Balasana, our child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart. Press your hips towards your heels and fold on down. And this will really be a full body practice, strengthening our legs, our core, our shoulders, our arms, our back. Challenging our balance a little bit as well. So right now in this first pose, try to really make a commitment to yourself to see this class through till the end. Even if that means that you need to take a break or two. But really just getting curious about where this practice can take you and what you can learn from it. Learning not only from poses and transitions that feel easy, but really learning from the challenges as well. And take three more breaths here. And we'll lift up tabletop pose on hands and knees. Palms under your shoulders, knees under your hips, just cat and cow to warm up the spine. Spread your fingertips wide. As you inhale, drop your belly. Curl tailbone up, lift your gaze. Exhale, push the floor away from you as you round and contract. And just keep going through those movements. Notice where there might be tension along your back. Two more here, inhale and exhale. Last one. And we'll step our right foot forward in between our palms to the top of the mat, finding a little low lunge here, just getting into our hip flexors, trying to get a little bit of stretch before we really work on strength. So melt your hips forward and down. No tension in your shoulders or in your neck. Just relax and press them down. And let's add a little twist here. Keep your left hand on the mat, right hand to your thigh. Push that thigh away from you. Roll the right shoulder back, maybe looking over your right shoulder as well. And coming back through to center, let's stretch into our hamstrings, straightening that front left leg. You might need to move and wiggle that foot forward a little. I like to flex the foot to push down into the heel and keep my spine straight as I hinge from the hips. And you're really digging your heel into the mat and rooting it back. So just checking in to see how you feel today. 
back through tabletop pose. We can find the second side, step your left foot forward, knee is over your ankle, hips come forward and down. Start with just this low lunge variation. So we'll be picking up the pace pretty soon and really amping up the intensity. So right now, find a breath rhythm that you think you'll be able to sustain no matter how challenging this practice becomes. So in and out through your nose, let's add a little twist, right hand down, left hand to your thigh. You can push your hand into your thigh to traction a little as you look over your left shoulder. Coming back through to center, straighten that left leg. Getting deeper into those hamstrings. And you can definitely bend your front knee here. One more big breath. And come back through to tabletop pose. Grab a hold of one block in your right hand. I like to hold it this way up, so holding it the more uh, the narrow side makes it a little bit easier to grip. And from this tabletop pose, just see if you can extend and reach your right arm forward. So already with a little bit of weight, you're gonna feel how your abdominals and your obliques need to shift and strengthen in order to keep your bicep along your ear. This is a lot harder than it looks. Flat back, lower belly in, and set that block down. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So right hand under your right shoulder, grab a hold of your block in your left hand, and try not to drop your belly or crease anywhere here. You're keeping a flat back as you reach. Left arm up, bicep along the ear. You should still be able to breathe. Keep that right elbow straight, lift up a little higher and release. Now bring your blocks on their lowest level and you can grip and place your palms directly on the top. So it depends how big your hand is and how wide you can spread the fingers. But for me, I like to bring my thumb and my little pinky finger on the outer edges. And then I have my three fingers kind of resting flat on the top of the block and you have them at the edges of the mat, so it's about shoulder width distance apart, and we're gonna do down dog on our blocks. So your first little downward dog, a great thing about having our blocks here is that it can get our heels, it can be a lot easier to have them reaching towards the mat, and it gives you a nice lift and length out of the shoulder girdle, reach the tailbone up, and let's flow into our plank pose. So lift your heels up as high as they can go. Ripple all the way forward into plank. Exhale, lift your hips all the way up and back, down dog. A few more just like this with your breath. Inhale. Plank pose. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Two more. Pull the belly in. Last one, inhale. And exhale, downward facing dog. And now let's go ahead and bring our knees down to the mat. And you'll just need one block for this one. So you can keep one at the top of the mat and you're gonna lower down. So almost as if we were doing a supported bridge, or sorry, a supported fish, you'll just use one block on its lowest level. And I like to have it kind of like where a bra strap would be underneath the thoracic spine. So you kind of need to work your way through here and keep your legs out in front of you. You can point through your toes, bring your hands interlaced behind the back of your head and drop the head down towards the mat. So start with a big expansion through your rib cage. So let your ribs flare open, open through your heart, like a big stretch here. 
And now reaching and pointing through your toes, we're gonna alternate from this position into a variation of a crunch on our block. So you're gonna inhale to open, and then as you exhale, curl and lift up just a little bit here and bring your right knee so you have it over your hip with your shin parallel to the floor. And we're going to alternate. So inhale, arch back. And then exhale, crunch up, lift your left knee up. Inhale back. Exhale, squeeze, control it in. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. Inhale, open. Exhale, squeeze it in. Inhale. And exhale, one more on each side. Stretch and open. Exhale, contract, belly in. Last one here. Left leg comes in. And release, straighten your arms, reach them up overhead, get a big extension here. And circle your arms all the way down until your hands are reaching or pointing towards your toes. Tuck your chin towards your chest. Inhale, come all the way up. Lift on out and release. Grab a hold of both blocks. One is going to go in between your upper inner thighs and the other one you're going to grab and hold in between your palms. So a variation of our boat pose. We're gonna lift up, squeeze and grab a hold of your block and reach that other block out in front of you. Think of rolling your shoulders back, lifting your chest up high. Take an inhale here and as you exhale, you're gonna bring your block in your hands over to the right and lower to your low boat. Inhale, back to your boat pose to center. Exhale, twist to the other side and straighten. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. Inhale, lift, last one. Exhale, twist. Come all the way back, cross at your ankles and release. Bring your blocks back to where they were and go ahead and place your hands on both blocks. Keep your knees on the mat. You still want your hands to be about shoulder width distance apart. And it might feel good instead of having your knees directly underneath your hips, see if you can walk your knees back a couple inches and come into a variation of your plank pose. So I need to shift my hips forward and draw the belly in. So we're gonna exhale to push down, press back up, and then send your hips back into a child's pose. So I'm not letting my hips go all the way down. I'm focusing a little bit more on stretching into my shoulders and my armpits. So really getting into the arms. Inhale all the way forward. Exhale to lower. Inhale, push up. Exhale all the way back. Take a full breath cycle here. Inhale, modified plank. Exhale, push up. Inhale, lift. Exhale, stretch through your arms. Hold as you inhale and exhale. Let's do three more like this. Inhale, modified plank. Exhale, push down, push up, press back and hold. Think of really pushing down into your fingertips and knuckles. Back into that plank, lower, push up, send it back. We only have one more like this to go. I know you're starting to feel it. Shifting forward, last one, core is strong. Press it back and shift it back. From here, let's come into our full plank pose on our blocks. So keep gripping and holding through. And you might wanna widen your feet towards the edges of your mat. Lengthen your tailbone back, draw your lower belly in. See if you can tap your right hand to your left shoulder without tilting your pelvis. Tap your left hand to your right shoulder. Bring it back down. Lift your right foot, lift your left foot. One more time like this. Tap the left, tap the right, lift the right foot, lift the left foot. Downward facing dog, push your hips all the way up and back. 
and relax your neck think of pushing back even further let's find our three-legged dog from here right leg stretches up bend your right knee open up your hip squeeze that heel in lift your knee up even higher as you exhale tap your knee to your nose notice how there's just so much more room now that we have our blocks inhale back to your three-legged dog same thing exhale squeeze it in keep your hips low inhale reach it back last one exhale squeeze look past your palms and step that right foot in between your blocks spin your back heel parallel to the shorter edge of your mat keep bending into that front knee lean onto your right hand and your right block find your extended side angle so left arm is making a diagonal line from the left fingertips all the way down to your left foot and you want to feel your right knee push into your upper arm Keep your hips as low as you can get them. Find your easy twist from here. So this time left hand comes down on your block, lift the back heel off the mat and reach your right arm up to the sky. Stacking one shoulder over the other. Transitioning into our side plank pose on the block. Stacking right leg over the left, push your feet into the floor to lift your hips up even higher. Lift out of your left shoulder. Take your vinyasa, right hand comes to the block, exhale, chaturanga, upward facing dog, exhale, downward dog. <sighs> Second side, left leg rises, bend your left knee, open up your hip, squeeze and lift it up even more and bring your knee to your nose come forward into your plank pose shoulders over those blocks inhale three-legged dog exhale squeeze it in inhale reach it back exhale squeeze look past your palms and step that foot through so I have my knee over my ankle I'm gonna keep my left hand on the block spin your back heel parallel to the shorter edge of your mat extended side angle right arm reaches up and over push your outer left knee against the inside of your left arm and think of really pushing back into that right foot don't let all of your body weight lean on that block get your legs to do most of the work for you easy twist right hand to your block lift the back heel up reach your left arm up stacking one shoulder over the other so this is your opportunity to really figure out where you're distributing your weights so cultivating that body awareness as we move into vashisthasana or side plank pose stacking one leg over the other pushing the feet down to lift the hips up big reach here into your flow we all meet back downward dog and from this downward dog bring your knees back down to the floor so similar to what we did before come back to tabletop you want to make sure this time that your knees are under your hips and your hands are directly on top of the blocks directly underneath your shoulders so we're going to pick up the block see if you can use grip strength to keep it the wider way this time to reach it forward and if you'd like to add on left leg will stretch back so you're balancing tabletop pose with a little bit of weight added in your hand try to flatten out your lower back and release let's switch sides redistribute your body weight grab a hold of that block with your left hand reach it forward and then extend that right leg back roll your right hip down pull your belly in you can always grip the block the other way if this one is not really working out for you just giving you some challenges and let's release round it out in your little cat stretch here 
<sighs> and go ahead and just set your blocks off to the side. We're only going to need one for what we're doing next. So just make sure you have one that's somewhere close at the top of the mat that you can grab when you need it and then find your downward facing dog from here. And just notice the difference in this prop free downward dog. And now we're going to stretch and lift our right leg up as high as it'll go and step the right foot forward in between your palms. Before you come up, grab one block, whichever one you have nearby and just lift it up into your high lunge. So we're going to do three different poses here, transitioning in and out of them. Definitely a bit of a challenge. From this high lunge, see if you can reach your arms forward and push up into your warrior three. Balancing here. And now come up to stand, bring your left knee in with you and twist as you push into your block. So you're pushing your hands into the block facing over towards that lifted left thigh lift up a little higher into your high lunge reach your arms up overhead so our three poses are the high lunge warrior three and that lifted knee twist let's do that again tilt forward virabhadrasana three squeeze and lift hold for one full breath cycle Bring that left knee in, twist open to the left, applying like five pounds of pressure in each hand, pushing into the block. Carefully stepping back to your high lunge, lift the block high up overhead. Lean forward, Vera three. Big breath in. Knee to chest twist. Lift that knee up as high as it'll go. Try not to dig your toes into the floor. High lunge. Big breath in here. And now go ahead and just tilt forward so you can drop your block towards the top of the mat and find your pigeon pose stretch here. So right knee behind your right wrist. Square off the pelvis. If you'd like, you can put one of your blocks underneath your hips. And we're going to fold forward and down for five breaths. <sighs> Feeling the effects of that flow on our first side. Try to get that right hip to open up and relax a little more. And let's lift back up. We'll find our downward dog. Stepping the right foot back to meet the left. And you can either stay here. If you'd like, you can add your vinyasa. Inhale, plank, chaturanga, upward dog, downward facing dog. And we'll get ready to do the same thing over on the second side. So start by lifting your left leg up as high as it'll go. And then you'll step your foot through in between your palms, grab a hold of one block before coming up. And you can start just by having your block at the center of your chest, just so you're working and focusing on the foundation in your legs, really feeling stable and balanced. Let's extend it forward, Virabhadrasana three, your warrior three. Keep an internal hip rotation, try to lift your arms up as high as they'll go into your standing twist right knee lifts up and you're going to twist over towards the right side of your mat push into your block carefully step back to your high lunge with your arms reaching up overhead draw the floating ribs down 
engage your abdominals as you tilt forward. Shift up, warrior three. At most, you're parallel to the floor. Elbows are strong and straight. Lift up into your twist. Slow, steady breaths, you got this. High lunge. Big, deep stance here. Warrior three. Standing twist. High lunge. And then dip all the way down so you can drop your block to the mat. Into your pigeon pose, left knee behind your left wrist. Square off through your pelvis here, open through your chest and come all the way down. Five to 10 breaths here. We are slowing down our heart rate, slowing down this practice. A really wonderful job. I know this was not an easy class. It's good to challenge ourselves sometimes. Well, who knows? Maybe you did find it easy at home, but I certainly did not. It's very hard to talk throughout. And let's come back into our downward dog. This is your last down dog and also your last opportunity to take a flow if that's what you'd like to do so you can move from plank chaturanga upward dog and your last down dog here and let's release since we have our blocks let's go ahead and come into our supported fish pose should feel really nice, maybe with a butterfly shape with your legs. I'm gonna do the second level of my block. So the first one supports in between your shoulder blades and the second one supports your head. I'm gonna bring soles of the feet together and knees falling apart just to open up through the hips a little. You're welcome to do another variation of this pose if you'd like. But give yourself a good 10 breaths here and it might feel good also to alternate so give yourself a few moments stretching your right arm up overhead noticing where you're feeling this the most and you can circle it down and switching with the left and for some people reaching both arms overhead feels good. For me, I know this is too much today, so I'm just going to keep my arms by the sides. But you're welcome to explore that other variation if you'd like. Three more breaths here. And you can tuck your chin towards your chest. We'll come into a butterfly forward fold. So lifting up, you can keep your legs as they are and just walk your hands out in front of you. And it might feel good even to just kind of crawl your fingertips out to one side and slowly crawl them over to the other. So you can really stretch into your lower back, getting into every little area that might have a little bit of tightness, all the areas of our spine and our back muscles that we really work today. 
Um, let's come all the way up. You can move your props off to the side. We won't be needing them. And we're gonna lay on our bellies, stretching just into our arms and shoulders a little bit more because we worked them quite a bit, as well as the pectorals coming into our broken wing or laying chest opener. So you can reach your left arm out to the side, either straight or bending the elbow at a 90 degree angle. Palm is flat, roll onto your left hip, left shoulder, left ear. And you can just push your right hand into the ground or you can bring your right hand back behind you, whatever feels good here. But we're looking to stretch into our left pectorals, so into your chest, into your left shoulder and all the way down your upper left arm. So into that bicep. And try to relax your upper body here. Relax your legs. Now let's release. We'll go do the same thing on the other side. Bring your right arm out, either straight or with that bent elbow variation, and roll. Five breaths here. And you can go ahead and flip over onto your back. Might feel good just to pull your knees in towards your belly, giving them a big squeeze here. You can always come into happy baby instead as well, your Ananda Balasana. Just whatever feels good and intuitive to you. Before we find our way to Shavasana, our final resting pose, and really take up some space and notice just how good it feels to do absolutely nothing after this challenging practice that really asked quite a bit of us. Mentally, we needed a lot of focus and coordination. And of course, physically, we needed strength and mobility. So now let yourself integrate this work by taking about two minutes here to just breathe and relax. And let's deepen our breath. I'm bringing some energy, I'm waking back up with a little bit of movement. 
And you can stretch your arms up overhead. Big extension here. And before you roll to one side and come up to take a seat. Join your palms together at the front of your heart, Anjali Mudra. Take a moment of gratitude for yourself, all the hard work that you've put in, the time you've made for your practice. And we'll close with the chant of Om one time. Breathe deeply. Thank you so very much for doing this power yoga class with me. I would love to know what you thought and how it went, especially with those new little variations with our props and with the blocks. If you would like more of these classes, do leave me a comment. Let me know. I'm always curious to see what you guys are looking for and what you'd like to see more of here on my channel as well as inside my mobile app. Thank you again very much and I'll practice again with you soon.